Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at tropical storms and how they are formed. Most people will know these tropical storms as hurricanes. However, in different parts of the world, they are called different things. If you look at the map now, you'll be able to see that hurricanes refer to tropical storms that occur in the Atlantic Ocean. However, tropical storms that occur in the Indian Ocean are called cyclones. If they occur in the Pacific Ocean and they hit the coast of China, Japan or North, Northern Australia, they are called typhoons. Now in this map you can see the amount of tropical cyclones that have occurred or tropical storms that have occurred throughout 1945 to the 2006 time period. They're categorized in terms of color. The largest type of tropical storm you can f get formed is a category five on the scale, indicated in red. And in terms of the distribution, you can see that all tropical storms tend to form and tend to occur in the tropical regions of the world. They don't exactly occur along the equator, but they occur a few degrees north and a few degrees south of the equator. You can see that there's a very high concentration of storms coming in off of the west coast of Africa, moving across the Atlantic Ocean and hitting the uh, islands of the Caribbean, Florida um, and other parts of the United States of America. There are very few amount of storms that are also formed off of the west coast of America uh, and Mexico. By far the majority of tropical storms occur in the Pacific Ocean and these form in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and they move westwards coming into contact with uh, the islands of Japan, the Philippines, uh, China and places like that. You can also see a few tropical storms that form in the Indian Ocean and they tend to move up into the Bay of Bengal and hit the countries of Bangladesh and India. And lastly, there are a few tropical storms that occur in the southern part of the Indian Ocean and the southern part of the Pacific Ocean coming into contact with the islands of uh, Australia and Madagascar and uh, that region. Now in this section you're looking at some of the damage that can occur from tropical storms. You can see large waves and storm surges that are coming off the sea. These can potentially cause flooding and coastal damage. You have really strong winds, um, heavy rainfall and basically anywhere that's near the coast is going to be in serious danger of damage to property, threat to life. So how are hurricanes formed? Well hurricanes normally occur in the hurricane season. In the Atlantic, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico and Central Pacific, this is between the 1st of June and November the 30th. The hurricane season in the Eastern Pacific is between May the 15th and November the 30th. Hurricane development often begins over tropical areas of the ocean. It requires quite a warm water temperature, normally above 27 degrees. And as this heat and moisture rises due to the convection currents, it forms large clusters of thunderstorms. These thunderstorms may then begin to rotate due to the Coriolis force of our planet. And they result in organized masses of thunder clouds that move in a circular motion. Depending on the hemisphere, they'll move in different directions. For those of you who aren't aware, the Coriolis force is a curving motion of the wind caused by the Earth's rotation. Air is deflected to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. These swirling clouds and rain clouds become more organized as they begin to circulate around the center of this storm. They're known as a tropical storm when wind speeds are less than about 38 miles per hour, which is approximately 61 kilometers an hour. This is classified as a tropical depression. However, once the wind speed gains and they reach a 39 mile an hour limit, this is then known as a tropical storm. It's given a name to identify it and uh, various organizations around the world begin to track it because it could potentially turn into a hurricane. These tropical storms gain energy from the sea. It is fueled by the rising water vapor and they pull in all of this energy from the warm ocean sea surface temperatures. 
the energy of these storms can constantly increase, but it's not until they reach 74 miles an hour or approximately 119 kilometers an hour that they are officially classified as a hurricane. These hurricanes can last more than two weeks, and as they move across the open waters, they can gain additional energy depending on the sea surface temperature. However, when they begin to cross land or they come into contact with land, they rapidly lose their source of energy, the warm water that we talked about, and they begin to lose energy. The wind speeds gradually reduce until eventually they peter out and they no longer have this hurricane force behind them. They then revert back to small tropical storms and will eventually dissipate over land. In this section we can see the structure of a tropical storm and it's separated into three different parts. Firstly, the eye of the storm, that characteristic center of it. This is located right in the center of the whole storm front. It normally measures about 20 to 30 miles wide or 10 to 65 kilometers. And this is where you have the highest sustained wind speeds. They have to exceed obviously 130 kilometers an hour if they're to be known as a hurricane. It's largely a cloud free area because the air is sinking and uh, it is probably the calmest part of the storm. Generally speaking, the eye of the storm shrinks the stronger the storm becomes. The highest wind speeds are found around the eye wall, the section um, that is directly around the eye of the storm. Wind speeds here can reach in excess of 320 kilometers an hour. This is where the real wind damage of the storm occurs. You also get extremely heavy rainfall, and this is the most destructive part of the storm. Finally, running all along the base of the storm, you get the rain bands. These tend to curve around uh, in a spiral fashion. They're capable of producing heavy bursts of rain and wind, and they can extend outwards from the eye of the storm, sometimes as much as 550 kilometers. In my next video, I'll be looking at one of the most famous storms to hit the United States of America, Hurricane Katrina. If you've liked this video and you'd like to see more content, please like and subscribe. I will try and upload additional videos every so often that should help you with your studies. Thank you very much for watching and have a really great day.